Hey guys, welcome to the Bioman Grooming Series. We're gonna start off step one that we do with every horse. Uh, we've got AJ here. He's had his mane and tail braided up for about a week now. And we're gonna take these braids out. We'll shampoo them. We'll rebraid them, condition them, and take you through that whole process. I'm gonna start by taking the braids out, then we'll brush it out before we uh, wash it. As you can see, like we've said from the beginning, we like using electrical tape to secure our braids. If you use the little rubber bands that are made, you know, kind of specifically for keeping in braids, if you use those and leave them in for a long period of time, they tend to break through the hairs um, because, I mean, you have to do them up tight in order for them to stay in and doing them up tight and leaving them in for long periods of time, any really, what I consider a long period of time on manes and, tail, manes and tails is anything over seven to 10 days. If you leave them in longer than that, you tend to have more breakage and more damage than, than you want, which you know, is obviously not a good thing if you're trying to grow this mane out and you're secured, you secure your braid right there and every time you keep rubber bands in, it's just cutting these hairs out, eventually, you're gonna have quite a few inches shorter of a mane than if you would use electrical tape. And for the last, so like I said, these have been in for a week. Bryce, come zoom in on this. People wonder if this electrical tape leaves a residue. You can see right here, these have been in over a week. It's been 110 here in Southern Utah for the last three days straight. There's no gunk, there's no grime. And this is actually, I didn't have our Biomain tape handy. I had it in a trailer that wasn't here. Um, this is just your standard black electrical tape. But the Biomain braiding tape works just as well or better. I'm just going to go through, undo these braids. If there's any major knots or snarls while I'm undoing these braids, I'll address them then. Try and get them out with my hands. If not, I got a brush. One little trick. I guess I'll show you is, you can see here, this is kind of matted. Well, when I go to undo that braid, sometimes that'll get hung up. What I'll do, just before I uh, go to brush or go to undo this braid, I'll get a dab of our Biomain Detangler. And honestly, I'll just get a little bit, put it in my fingers, put that back in my pocket. And I'll just kind of run it through the end there and then put the rest on the braid because I know I'm going to use it later anyways. And then when I go to pull these out, you can see how smooth and easy those come out. And when I go to brush this, I like having a backing sometimes on the end of the hair because sometimes it just pushes away. Quit leaning on me. So I'll put it up against the shoulder, start at the ends, work my way up. And now that's brushed out. All those hairs are separated and it'll be a lot easier in the long run to deal with. And this is as wide as I'd go. This is actually wider than we typically will go. I'd like for this braid to be about half as wide. Uh, the reason being, the more hair that you bring in, that you funnel down into one braid, the more tugging you're gonna have when that horse lifts his head up, extends it down to eat or drink, you're gonna, and his neck stretches, you're gonna have more tugging on that, causing irritation. So ideally, I'd like to see this braid, that's probably four inches wide, about two inches wide. Same thing here, what I'm gonna do, is get our detangler, and I'm gonna to go to each one of these braids and just rub it through the ends of them. And then when I get to each individual braid, I'll just brush the ends out and continue on braiding. Thank you. 
And honestly, if you can stay on a routine to do these weekly, at most 10 days, that's consistently what his mane looks like. You don't have the ratted, nasty mess from leaving them in too long, a lot of damage, broken hair. You can see here, there's a few hairs coming out. I think what had happened with this is he ended up chewing on it when he was eating. It looked like it was a little matted when I caught him this morning. Cool. Now that we've got it all unbraided, what you could do is brush it out before you shampoo it. What I like to do, and I like to do it because I'm a huge fan of our shampoo, is leave it be. I mean, there's snags and snarls in it. What I want to do is show you what it's like to brush through after we shampoo it. Our Biome shampoo does a fantastic job of not only cleaning the hair, cleaning out the debris, really sudsing up, pulling out that dust, debris, dirt, film, getting down to the roots. Make sure, I'll show you, we'll work it down into the roots of the mane, rinse it well, but also conditions the mane in such a way that after it completely dries, when you go to brush it out, your brush honestly just glides through it. Unless it's a ratted, nasty mess, after you shampoo it and let it dry, that brush glides through it almost like you've got a detangler in it anyway. So we're gonna go about uh, washing it and using our brand new Biomane shampoo. Okay, we've got them unbraided. We're gonna wet it down and show you how the Biomane shampoo works. I keep my hose close because after I get the shampoo in it, a lot of times, I mean it's hot already, but you got all this water running out, you're going to want some water in there to help this shampoo foam up. So I'll run a bead along the roots and then I'll pull the main out. You can always just apply it in your hand. But I'll pull the mane out and I just do a fine line, zigzag, throughout so it gets pretty even. All the way down. And then I'll put a ball, not a ball, but a dab of it in my hands. I'll get my hose again. Just wet it a little bit more. And then I'll start up here at the roots. All I'm doing right here at the beginning is trying to build those suds, get that shampoo foaming. So I'll do the whole main just to build those suds. Okay, and then I'll go back in and I'll really scrub into those roots Obviously, you're not trying to damage the hair. But I do it vigorous and strong enough that I'm exposing those roots down at the hairline. Trying to get this shampoo, which it doesn't take much effort, trying to get the shampoo to really foam up. You can see right there how much the shampoo foams up. That's what we wanted it to do. That's what we formulated it to do because it's these suds and these bubbles and this foam that cling on to that dust, that debris, any gunk in their mane. That's what these suds do is cling on to that. And when you rinse it, you rinse the foam out and the bubbles and the suds and you're rinsing out all the crud that's in their hair. Okay, now that I've got that, I feel good about getting his roots really well. So now what I'll do is I'll kind of give a little squeeze, get those suds out, and then I'll run them through the main. This does not damage the hair. 
if you were to do it like you're trying to ruin the hair, I'm sure you could. But I'm not pressing too hard. I'm just really trying to get on a mane this long. This is the technique I like. Didn't learn the technique from anybody. It's just after doing these long manes and tails hundreds of times, it's what I found that I like the best. You can see those suds coming out through that hair. I'll just run them down through. And this technique I really like for long manes because I don't feel like I'm balling it up, trying to get all the hair done and then being left with a mess. I feel like that damage it, damages it more so than anything. So I'll just lightly kind of, almost like you're starting a fire. Get this last section, you can see when I squeeze, all the foam and those suds coming out. It's got the nice pina colada scent. I know I'm really biased, but guys, this shampoo is phenomenal. Cool. I like to let that sit for a bit. How long is a bit? Honestly, kind of when the foam starts dissipating or dissolving out when it doesn't look as foamy or soapy so I'd give it five ten minutes I just like to let that absorb this shampoo does not hurt the mane if anything it's great for the mane um, a lot of people feel like when they get that shampoo in the mane they gotta hurry and rinse it out because it's full of chemicals it's full of dyes it's full of garbage that they don't want absorbing into that hair I want this sh uh, shampoo absorbing into the mane it's great for the mane, coconut infused. It can be there as long as it wants to be there. But I typically, once I start seeing the, the uh, soap and suds start to dissolve and disappear is when I'll go to rinse it, which is anywhere from five to 10 minutes. So while we're waiting for this, like I said, I let it sit for anywhere from five to 10 minutes after I shampoo it. Don't let it dry just because then you have to wet it to rinse it. It's just easier and more convenient. Don't let it dry completely, but rinse it out after five, 10 minutes, letting it sit. This shampoo is in our 12 ounce bottle. I can't talk about it enough. It's something that we've spent a long time coming, uh, developing, and we wanted something that honestly, after everything, after all the products we've tried, we wanted something that we had no complaints about whatsoever and we're real picky about our products and what we use on our horses and there's not been one complaint or one regret uh, with this product it's a coconut oil infused shampoo creates a good thick lather if you as you saw in the video uh, me shampooing this horse really thick rich lather what i love about that is it's those suds and those bubbles that are going to attach to the dirt and the debris in that mane and when you rinse it out that's what you're rinsing out. Without that sudsy, soapy lather, you're not getting all the contaminants, not necessarily harmful contaminants, I'm talking dust and debris and particles. Without that big, thick lather, you're not getting those uh, contaminants out of the main. And so that's one thing we wanted with this. We wanted it to be a good, clean, uh, I guess relaxing isn't the right word, but a good, clean, a uh, comfortable smell. We went with uh, pina colada. Really like the pina colada scent. It's comfortable for the horses. I everyone I think has used a shampoo that they're just their horses are uneasy about. I don't know if it's the feel of it on their skin or the smell. This I swear we put horses to sleep doing their manes and tails. Um, real simple to use, just like your standard shampoo. Uh, honestly, a little bit goes a long ways. For AJ, he's got quite the mane. I don't feel like I used hardly any on his mane. I feel like this bottle's gonna last him a long time even doing his mane once, maybe twice, three times a week. Uh, so now that we've got our, our uh, soap and our suds and bubbles kind of dissolving out, now's the time that I'm gonna rinse that hair out.
I like starting at the roots, just letting that water run down. There's no right or wrong way to doing it. The only wrong way would be is if you didn't rinse all of it out. The higher you get on their neck, the closer you get to their ears and their face. Some horses are a little more sensitive about it. If you need to, turn your pressure down so it's not as uncomfortable for them. AJ might act uncomfortable, but he can deal with it. He's had this done far too many times. So I'm gonna rinse this side completely to where I feel like there is no soap coming out. And one easy way to check that, get a section of main, pull it out and run your hose through it so you can see that water go all the way through. All the way down. We'll do another section. Okay, now I feel like I got the whole mane rinsed out. If that horse is gonna rub, it's gonna rub from irritation caused at the skin or at the roots. I feel like from this side, coming from the top, I was able to rinse out the base of his mane really good, but I don't feel like I was able to get this underside as good from here. So I just throw that mane to the other side. I'm gonna do the same thing here, but mainly just on the roots. And this is just preventative measures. I am just trying to prevent AJ from wanting to rub because of any type of irritation that I've caused him. Fan this out a little bit. I'll get his neck where that shampoo had laid. Make sure we got that all rinsed out. And you can see I got some bubbles back here. So I'll just go ahead and make sure I rinse them off completely. I don't want to give him any reason to rub or any type of discomfort. The shampoo isn't gonna irritate them. Obviously, each horse is different. If your horse has any type of skin condition or allergies, you're gonna to wanna to know that prior to using the product. And then we'll bring this mane back. Honestly, his mane's fine to dry like that. I don't want his mane tamed to that right side at all. So I'm just gonna bring it back to its natural side. Now, at this stage, you can do one of two things. You can leave it, let it dry, brush it when it's dry. What I like to do just to make my job a little easier um, brushing it is I'm gonna get some detangler and apply it to this wet mane. And as it dries, that detangler is gonna be on there long enough that it absorbs into that hair and makes brushing a lot easier. So I'm gonna switch out, get some detangler, and I'll show you how we do that. Okay, now that we've got them rinsed out, while this is drying, prior to it getting completely dry, I want to apply the detangler. You don't have to. I personally like to do it because I feel like brushing it out after it's completely dry with the detangler in it, that mane just feels that much more nourished, that much more healthy, strong, and that brush really just glides right through it. So there's no right or wrong way. I get a pretty good dollop and I rub it in with my hands and honestly I just kind of coat it. A lot of people have seen our detangler and thought it's really unconventional because it's not a liquid and it's not a spray. You don't mist it on. Well, there's a reason for that. For one, most if not all the detangler sprays are filled with silicones and ingredients 
that if left in for long periods of time, they're actually gonna dry that mane out, causing it to be brittle, break, and they're just not healthy. What I like about our detangler, why we didn't want to do a spray, I like being hands-on with it. I like feeling through that hair, feeling where your thick spots are, your thin spots, feeling knots. Like even if we weren't shampooing him and redoing his mane today, if I was just brushing his mane out for a jackpot or a show, when I apply the detangler, I like to feel and run my hands through that hair so that when I get my brush, I don't just go right at it with my brush and encounter a bunch of knots. So, but you can see this detangler literally absorbs into the hair. And most, if not all, other detanglers that are on the market, their sole purpose, their job, is to coat that hair strand. If you got a hair strand and you spray that detangler on, all it's doing is coating it with a, honestly, I'm gonna call it a, a fake film, making your brush easy to glide over. Well, eventually, that's gonna wear off, and prior to wearing off, it's damaging that hair strand. What the Biomain detangler does is it actually absorbs into that hair strand, strengthening that hair strand, conditioning that hair strand. It honestly works like a conditioner. It's just got a little more of a slippery factor for brushing. We're gonna let that dry. We could brush that right now without harming it. I can show you, even when it's wet, I'm a, always been a huge advocate, advocate for not brushing while it's wet because that hair can stretch, it's a lot more elastic. There's that much more friction with those hair, with those water molecules attached to the hair. But just to show you how good this detangler is, we'll brush this section out while it's wet. Which honestly, I am not a fan of doing but you can see how this brush just glides right through that hair. I mean, like I said, I'm biased, but that's pretty rad. It's pretty rad, huh? So we're gonna let that dry. Probably take about 35 seconds to be dry, as hot as it is, and we'll check back. Okay, so I got too impatient to let it dry completely. I wanna show you how good this hair brushes out with being washed with the Biomain shampoo. Prior to being completely dry, we applied the Biomain detangler and using our handy dandy Biomain brush. I'm just gonna get right into it. Watch how easily this brush glides through this hair. And it's still wet. You see how, like I wish you could feel it. You gotta order this stuff. Like when you wash it, put this detangler in it, it just feels thick, it's got weight to it, feels healthy. I don't know if lush is a word. Yeah, it is, it feels lush. That's the great thing about our brush. If you hit a knot, it just chills there. It says, hey, wait a minute. Got a knot, let's not tear it out. Get your fingers. Go and work it out with your hands and go back to it with the brush. Slowly work your way back up. I'm gonna go out on a limb and say that is the best your horse's hair is ever gonna feel. And you can see the weight it's got, the fullness, it just feels great. If taking care of your horse's mane and tail is stressful, and not therapeutic like it is for me. You're not using the right stuff, guys. Follow our routine. Use our products. It's life-changing. I'm not kidding, before we came out with this 
shampoo, conditioner, and detangler line. Like, I always like doing manes and tails, but not nearly as much as I like doing it now. Like these products make it so simple and easy and just the feel that you get running this brush through this hair, it's, you haven't felt it before. I know I sound like I'm getting way too into brushing this mane and tail, but it's fun because you take a take an issue that's not necessarily an issue. You know what I mean? Like brushing manes and tails really isn't that big of a problem, but when you can simplify it and make it so much easier and so much more productive. and so much better for the hair. I swear most people when they brush through their mane and tail, they just feel like, oh, well, I'm doing more damage than good, but I gotta brush me, gotta look good. Well, that's not the case anymore. See that? You hit a knot, it shows you where the knot is. So our top tips for brushing, obviously when you saw when I started, I started the ends and I worked my way up you know, in a few inch increments. Why? Because if you start up here, so say you've got this big section of mane, say you've got a knot or a big snarl right in here, and I start up here at the top and I start dragging through, I'm going to have this brush full of hair by the time I get to this knot. With any other brush, you just crash right through that. With our brush, our brush gets hung up because of how many bristles there are. Um, and won't allow you to bully and break through that hair, uh, through that knot. Um, so tip one, use our biomane brush, mane and tail brush. Tip two, start at the ends, work your way up. Step three, don't get in a rush. If you're in a rush, like I see guys all the time, and I've been in a rush too, but I see guys all the time at rodeos and jackpots, hurry and jump their horse out, hurry and saddle. Crap, his mane looks like garbage. They grab a brush and just woom, 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 run a brush through it rip out a ton of hair just so they can get a few braids in and not get in their dallies, go out and rope their steer. Don't touch the mane. Like save yourself that extra time by just not touching it. Cause you did more damage in that 30 seconds of trying to make it look good than just leaving it alone. Don't be in a rush. Honestly, manes and tails for me are like working the arena on the tractor. Just take your time. It should be therapy. It should be easy, should be a little therapeutic session for you. Brush through it, enjoy how good this brush feels running through this clean, detangled biomain mane. I've kind of been jumping around, but I know where I'm at. This is the only section I got left. Guys, look how, Bryce, come zoom in on this. Like, I just, that just looks sleek, it looks clean, it looks healthy. <laughs> Gotta sneeze. I don't know, I can't say enough about it. Granted, I'm biased because I helped develop it, but my gosh, this stuff kicks But Okay, here's a knot. I'm gonna throw this over on the other side so we don't have to deal with it. Here's a knot, prime reason why you start at the end and work your way up. If I were to hook this and try and tear through it, like I'm tugging on it pretty good right there, this brush isn't letting me do it. It gets hung up. Well, then it pulls right out. So I start at the ends, work my way up. I'm not even gonna attempt to get that with the brush. I'm just gonna work it out with my fingers and look how simple that was. Found another one. Work it out with your fingers. You can do that pretty simply without any product, but since we had applied that biomain detangler prior to it drying completely and prior to brushing, you can dang near brush through that with your fingers. Okay. Again, start lower than the knot was, work your way up. Got it brushed out. I hear another knot. I just found it. It wasn't bad. We brushed through it right there. Bingo. See another one. Take the brush out. Come in here. 
So another tip, and you're gonna have breakage. These braids, it's hot here, the flies are thick. This horse, he's not rubbing bad, but occasionally I'll see all of these horses just kind of rubbing their head or pushing against a panel, trying to get some relief from the flies, even though we fly spray them, fly mask them. It's just horse nature to try and get those flies off of them. You're gonna have some breakage, okay? Um, the key to all this is preventing the most breakage and the most damage to that hair as possible. That's accomplished with the Biomane brush, that's accomplished with our shampoo, our conditioner, and our detangler. So we got it about dried out, and honestly that mane's gonna dry out faster when you get those hairs separated from each other. When you got a whole clump of hair like this, that's soaking wet, it stays wetter longer. If you can get those hairs separated, they're gonna dry faster. But, I mean, the proof's in the pudding. I know that sounds cliche, but I don't think his mane's ever looked better. Okay. We got AJ shampooed, applied the detangler, brushed him out. Two things missing, braiding him and conditioning the mane. I like to condition after we braid, just because when you apply a conditioner before, that hair's real slick. I don't feel like the braids hold very well, uh, nor does the tape. We're gonna be using our Biomane braiding tape that we have designed specifically for manes and tails. You're not gonna leave gunk. It's got a good stretch, it's got great adhesive. If you like using the black electrical tape like we've been preaching for years, you're gonna really like this uh, braiding tape. So, jump right into it. I typically start at the withers and work my way up only because I would rather have, you know, this top section of hair be the leftover that I can adjust my size of braids more so than the withers. Uh, the reason for that is when this horse puts his head down to eat, drink, lifts his head up to look around, whatever, the movement in this neck is axist, is that a word? Hinges from the withers. So when that neck goes down, this is where you're getting some stretch in the skin and hair. And I don't want a big long section of braid here for when he extends his head down, gonna be pulling, tugging on these hairs. I don't mind it as much up here, but I definitely don't want it down here. Like we've said for years, use a two to three inch section of hair. I just do, you know, your three strand standard braid. Yeah. Key to braiding. If I were to preach two things, don't have a big large section of mane like we just discussed. Don't do these first crosses. Look at this, Bryce, if you can zoom in on this. If you do these first crosses tight, Watch what happens, they're loose now, watch what happens to these roots. If I tug on those and do them tight, see how it bunches that hair up? Well, guess what happens when I go turn him out in his pen after about five minutes? He's gonna get ticked. It's no different than having someone sit here and tug on your hair all day, every day for a week, seven to 10 days. Eventually you're gonna get ticked and start rubbing, try and get some relief. So, these first few crosses, I've got what, three, four, I don't have them extremely loose to where they, they're not gonna stay firm and hold up, but I do have them loose enough that there is no pull on his skin. And after I get four, five, or six crosses there, I know that's kind of vague, but as soon as I get a few crosses, then I'll start to tighten it up. What I wanna prevent is having this section coming out of his skin be tight. Okay, so now we'll tighten this up. Work our way down. Now this section down close to the withers, you typically have an, an uneven section. I slipped up there, I'm gonna fix this braid. An uneven section meaning, you know, that hair's 
That means long, long, long till about here, and then it gets short. So you're gonna have this happen. You got two short braid, two short strands, one long strand. Don't worry about it. Don't try and weave them in together. I mean, you can if you want, but I just leave that one fairly long. Get your tape, attach it, get a good wrap, tight, tug tight, tug tight, break it off, rub it smooth. And do that all the way up the main. Okay, we're finished up doing his mane in braids. Let me show you this biomane braiding tape. Best part about it, it says biomane on it. Use it just like you do your electrical tape. Start your first turn. I like to get a little tug ski. Make sure it's tight, pinch it. Break it, and then just make sure and rub that flush. So it doesn't, if you have, what'll happen is if, say this is on the main, and you got a little tail sticking off, like that, if you don't rub it flush, you're gonna get dust, hay, debris, crap in there, and eventually it's just gonna keep peeling and peeling and peeling to where that uh, tape comes off. So rub it flush like that. AJ has been successfully washed, braided, shampooed, detangled, and he looks fresh. Okay, so people ask, do you ever do the forelocks? We never see you do the forelocks. Yes, we do, just not as frequently um, as the mains and tails. For one reason, they're not getting braided. I kind of leave them alone. Um, the forelock is the hardest section of hair on the horse to grow. The more you can leave it alone, the better off you are. Not to say you can't do anything with them, um, but a lot of times when we're done riding them, exercising on them, jackpotting on them, we spray them off. When we spray their faces and their heads off, their forelock gets pretty well clean. Um, don't feel like I gotta pay super special attention to them unless they're longer like chromes, pongos, uh, alleys. So but let's walk you through how we do a forelock. A lot of horses don't like their faces sprayed. I would start off on a lower pressure. Don't crank up your hose as hard as it can go. Start on a lower pressure. If you can use a softer type uh, spray nozzle that doesn't reduce it down to a stream like that, if you can fan it out to be a little bit softer when it hits them, do that. Um, AJ gets his face sprayed a lot, not that he necessarily is in love with it, but he's kind of used to it. He may throw his head up, but I'll kind of introduce it mid nose. He'll stick his head up a little bit. I just kind of leave it until he wants to lower his head, then I raise it up. I'm pretty much just training him. The lower your head goes, the less I'll bug you. So again, I don't need to spend a lot of time here. Get the forelock wet, turn your water off for a minute. Leave it alone. I'll get our shampoo. Put a dollop in my hand. I'll kind of lather it myself before I put it in the hair, in the forelock at least. You're working up around their ears. They don't necessarily like their ears messed with, all of them. Shouldn't say all horses don't but a good majority that you're gonna deal with don't like their ears messed with. 
I use this, I've got to spray his face anyways to get to his forelock. I use this as an opportunity to wash his face and his head too, okay? He's got white stripe down his face. I don't get it in his ears. I don't get it in his eyeballs. If it runs in there, it's not that big a deal, but I don't specifically go rubbing soap in his eyes. But I will use this opportunity since I gotta spray his face anyways. I'm gonna wash it. I'll do his muzzle. I don't shove it up in his nose. Don't wanna make him uncomfortable. I'll do under his chin, do his jowls. Like I said, his whole face, just by getting his forelock wet, his whole face is wet. Just shows you that his whole face has gotta be wet when I rinse the forelock off anyways. So I might as well shampoo it and clean it. Where that's on his face, I'm gonna use a little different approach than I do on the mane. On the mane, I said we leave it in for five to 10 minutes. Where this is on his face, really there's nothing in there that's gonna harm his eyes, burn his eyes, but just be safe about it. That's not a lot of hair on his forelock. That's not a lot of hair, like long hair on his face that needs to penetrate down through to get to the skin. It's already essentially on the skin. So I'm just gonna go right to rinsing it off. I don't feel like I gotta spend a lot of time letting that soak in. What I like to do, don't spray right directly at their eye, but I'll spray around their eyes first, just ensuring that he's not gonna get anything going into his eye that's causing him discomfort. I feel like the lower I go on his nose, the more he wants to mouth it, which is fine. The higher I go up towards his ears, the lower he wants his head to get. I don't make a big deal of it. I could battle him, I could fight him, I could make him put his head down, I could tie his head down. There's no point, like the whole point in this was to clean his forelock. Guess what, it's clean. Now I'm gonna sit here and rinse off that soap on his nose. Now he's really wanting to be a goofball about things. And this is good for him. My heck, this, you saw how he was when I first started, wanted to put his head up, kind of be a dink. Do not spray directly in their ears. Most horses in this situation are gonna pin their ears back. That's not necessarily because they're ticked off. It's protecting their ears, putting the openings towards the back so you don't flow water into their ears. Don't make them put their ears forward. Don't ear them down, don't pin them down. If they don't like their face sprayed, do it until they do, honestly. There's ways to do it. We could do a series, honestly. I, we could do a little short series on how I like to get them. I haven't spent a lot of time with AJ doing it just because he's never been terrible. But the more you do it and the less of a problem you make it, if they make it a big deal, don't make it a big deal. Okay, so go back, fill that forelock, make sure there's no soap. When I folded it back over, I felt like there was a little soap. I'm gonna come here from the back, avoiding his ears, and just spray so it's going down his face. Again, avoid his ears. And he's good. That's how we do the forelock. Okay, we're gonna show you how we apply the conditioner. Real simple. We just did a short little clip that we meant to do sooner, um, but I forgot, so we did it just now on washing the forelock. That's why AJ's wet again. Um, no big deal. I can apply conditioner while he's wet. Um, this conditioner, again, it's coconut oil infused cream that I can't talk highly enough about. Really penetrates through, it's a conditioner that you can leave in. You don't have to rinse it out. That's what I'm gonna do here is leave it in. Um, penetrates the hair, really just absorbs in fast, efficient, and leaves that hair with weight, with body, and feeling like, honestly the best way to describe it, the opposite of dry and brittle. Like it just feels lush. So, I'm gonna get a half decent sized dollop of it. I'm just gonna coat the braids. I'll probably get a couple braids out of that much. And that's going heavy. You don't have to go this heavy. If I wanted to, I could just do a strip, strip down, strip down. Um, but I'm gonna go a little bit heavier. I really like before I put these horses up for their manes to feel conditioned, um, soft, 
and like they're they're moist like they've got some some moisture in them to help defend against the dry climate the dry pan the dry days that we have here in southern utah everything's just so hot and dry anything we can do to help these manes and tails stay as lush as possible the better Make sure and get the ends on each one of these. Because if you're gonna have any breakage, that's typically where it starts is at the ends and creeps its way up. A few more braids and we'll be good. Now, before I turn him loose in his pan, I am gonna let this uh, conditioner dry. Reason being, if he goes right to his pan and wants to roll, this being wet, the shavings and the dust and sand in his pan are going to cake right to it, whereas they wouldn't if it were dry. Not saying he's not going to get some still in there, but it's not going to just cake to it like it would with it being wet. Okay, we just got done with our, our uh, main grooming series on AJ. We want to talk about washing the coat and the benefits of our shampoo for the coat. Um, again, the benefits of the shampoo and using them for the coat are that heavy, thick lather of soap and suds that you get from the shampoo is what binds to the dust, debris, particles uh, in the hair, whether it's the mane and tail, forelock, or the body coat. It's that that uh, soapy suds foam that's gonna draw that out of the coat. Uh, we're gonna be using our Biomain grooming glove. One of the greatest things we ever did. Really helps to lift up the hair, get down to the skin, and really draw out everything that's in that coat that shouldn't be there. Honestly, if your horse is on Biomain, if you've been feeding Biomain for at least 30 days, you use this shampoo and these gloves to groom your horse. When your horse dries, that horse is gonna shine. You're gonna have the dust and debris out of his coat. He's being fed Biomain. Like AJ gets nothing but alfalfa hay and Biomain. And you're gonna see the shine that he's got once we get his coat clean. So I'm gonna wet down his coat. We already did his neck. When we did his uh, mane, braiding and conditioning it, I'm gonna try and stay below you know behind his withers because he does have fresh conditioner in his mane so i'm going to try and stay from about his withers and shoulder back i'm just going to wet him down you can see here he's got quite a bit of dust and debris on his hind end if it's foaming up like that that's not from soap obviously we haven't put any soap on there i'm just going to do this side of him Shut our water off. I'm gonna put a little can, uh, shampoo in my glove. Set it down, get it a little wet. I'm gonna go right to scrubbing. The benefit of these gloves too in grooming the body is it really extends the amount of body you can cover with a limited amount of shampoo. Or that one dollop of shampoo in my hand would have maybe done this section with bare hands. You're really able to utilize the sudsing foaming action and that lather, I shouldn't say action, but that foaming lather that we've formulated this shampoo to have. These gloves really highlight that aspect of it. And you can see that hair smooth when we go back forward against the grain, it really lifts that hair, allowing you to get down to the skin, and they're not stiff, they're not, I mean, you can see these, they're not stiff, you're not causing discomfort or scratching the horse. If anything, it's like a little massage on his skin. 
Again, pay attention that I haven't added any more shampoo to these gloves. But these gloves really help to utilize the amount of shampoo you've had. Again, always, I mean, I'm back here all nonchalantly, but AJ's pretty good about being around his butt. So I'm not too concerned. I like him because he can go down and be right around his foot on his hairline there. You can get up underneath. A lot of horses in the summer, about tipped over, get Cintra up in here just from sweating. Even if you're not riding them, they just sweat. This is a place where that sweat collects. And if it's not cleaned, you can get sore. Be careful on their flanks. But I like going on the insides of their legs, like AJ's got a scrape here. Be mindful of that. I haven't really got that part of his leg wet, so I'm not gonna do that just yet. We'll wet that down and I'll show you how I do their legs. And again, like I said, when we did the, when we did his mane, you can let the shampoo, you don't want it to dry, but you can let it sit for a bit. You know, just foam it up, get that lather going. I'll come in. Do around his legs, do up under his cinch area and his girth. Come back, do this section of his leg. And what I like about it is, yeah, they're kind of thick gloves, but you can feel any little nick or scrape. I felt right there, he's got a nick on the inside of his ankle. So you feel those, you can be mindful of those, clean them up really good, doctor them, do up his hawks. And the best part about the gloves, when you're done, rinse them out. All that hair, all that gunk, grime, shampoo, comes right out. And you're left with clean, dry hands. It's a great tool, we use them all the time. We already washed his face, but these are great on the face. They don't aggravate the eye, but you're able to get into the little crevices in his eye and his snout underneath his chin, around his eyes, without really aggravating him. Like how, how frequently do you brush your horse's face and never feel like it's actually as clean as it could be? Spray a little water on him, even if you don't use a shampoo. Spray a little water on his face. Use that glove, and you can get their faces, you know, before a show, before a jackpot, you can really clean them up. So now, I mean, you can tell, except for, except for that section right there, you wouldn't know that we shampooed the horse. I'm not worried about that. Like, the shampoo isn't completely dry, so it's not gonna harm him at all, it's not gonna cause any discomfort. I wouldn't allow it to completely dry, but allowing it to do its thing, allow those suds to dissolve. There's no harm in doing that. Really pay attention. If you're on a horse that, well, if you own a horse that gets used a lot, especially performance type horse that you're booting them up, really take a lot, spend a little extra time cleaning this lower leg area where they've been booted, where they sweat, where they've got sand and dirt um, that gets accumulated there. You know, it collects there, it gets caught inside their boots and they're sweating that, that uh, sand and dirt really is working its way into their skin. If they're trapped in that boot sweating and that, that boots agitating it and just almost making it penetrate into their skin, Spend a little more time spraying that off and using that grooming glove to really scrub it out of their hair and their skin there. I think you'll see a lot better results over time.
we're gonna go ahead and finish up the other side of him. But that's our grooming glove, paired with our shampoo. You watch, we're not gonna apply anything, we're gonna let him dry, put him out in the sun, and he will shine. Guys, if you're feeding Biomain, like I said, if you're feeding Biomain, you use our shampoo line, our uh, grooming line, that includes our shampoo, conditioner, detangler, paired with our grooming glove, there's no reason your horse isn't gonna be gorgeous all year long. Okay, we brought Shiner in to do his tail. Um, you can tell, his tail bag's seen better days, but that's why we use them. You know what they look like brand new. This is what they look like after a few months use. And I would much rather this tail bag look this terrible than his tail. So we're gonna remove this tail bag. We're gonna hang it up. Shiner hasn't had his mane and tail done for probably about two weeks. He ended up spending a week at the vet. He had a deal going on with his eye and didn't want to risk anything with the eye. So we left him at the vet for a week to get taken care of. So he was under their care. So in case something came up that we didn't catch or we didn't know how to handle, there was no lack of time in getting him in and that. He just stayed there with them. Um, so tails are a little bit different than the manes. I like to apply a little more detangler to the tail um, than I do the manes when I redo them, you know, even before shampooing them. Just because this tail has been wrapped up in that tail bag, a lot of times you get dust and debris in that tail bag and where he's been without being done for a couple weeks, I'm expecting this to be in not the greatest shape. So what will determine if I put detangler in the tail is how it comes undone. Like if when I'm undoing this braid, if it just kind of slides out and is good without catching and snagging, I won't really apply it, which honestly it is. It's coming out pretty dang easy. Because if it's matted and nasty undoing the braid like this, it's going to be nasty to brush. And so I might as well get detangler in there sooner than later. Now, where I'm going to hit a junction, where I hit the junction up here, where that tail bag attaches, we're probably going to have a little more of a mess. But really, it doesn't look that terrible. He's got bigger shavings from, from the vet's pen, which I like. I like that they have shavings, keep them in good dry ground. Um, honestly, I'm not going to use any detangler in it. I'm just going to wet it down, shampoo it. I'm not even going to brush it right now. I'm going to shampoo it, wet it down, shampoo it, get a good thick lather in this tail where he hasn't been done in a couple weeks. I'll probably use a little more shampoo than I would on a, on a horse that gets done weekly. Uh, one thing to notice, obviously his tail drags the ground. If he were to back up, step to the side or something, he could step on it, tearing it out causing him discomfort, causing me to lose my mind. So if I ever leave him, I just tie it up with a quick little half hitch knot like that. Okay, so I'm just gonna soak it really, really good. Make sure it gets all the way through. A lot of the times when we're spraying these tails, the backside, the underside, it's, you think you're penetrating through, but you don't. Make sure to get that underside, otherwise that shoe, shampoo is not gonna be able to Really lather like it should. Always be careful working around the hind end of a horse. Okay, we will get our shampoo. I grabbed detangler. We'll get our shampoo. I'm not worried about the shavings that are still in here. Those will brush out after we get it dried out. And I'm gonna do like I said, I'm going to do a little bit more than I typically would just because his tail 
hasn't been done in a while. So my routine, how I do it, I'll apply the shampoo, I'll squeeze it in just to kind of get it in the tail. No, it's not going anywhere. I'll do the top section, and then I'll come down and do the bottom section. I feel like if I were to just leave this as is, you can see you're gonna get some dripping. So just kind of run your hand through it, squeeze it in, make sure it attaches to the tail how you want. And then I'll get my hose again. Just get a little fine mist in there. Help with that lather. Once I get, I'm not neglecting this top part of the tail. I just applied majority of that, excuse me, shampoo down below the tailbone, his tailbone's right here. So I'm gonna really work it in, get that lather going, and then I'll get some of this lather and apply to the top of the tail and work into his tailbone. You can see this causes him a little bit of discomfort. I'm in a pretty vulnerable spot here. I'm comfortable here. I know this horse, done a lot with this horse. I've done this before on this horse, not to say he couldn't kick my head off if he decided to. So don't put yourself in a spot you don't feel comfortable in. And I'm gonna use same technique that I used in uh, our main video. It's almost like the little campfire starter technique. Don't push so hard that you feel like you're breaking those hairs. I'm going real light. And all this is doing is separating those hairs so they're not just in a ball or in one thick column. Work your way down. I'll scoot back a little. Now that those waves and kinks have come out of his tail. You can really start to see how long his tail actually is. Not quite as good as AJ's, but he's getting some length. And then when I get to the end, I'll kind of just fold up the tail, work it in right here. Separate those hairs out. Those strands, you can still see the strands that were used for the braid. I'll try and just work those out. Now I'm gonna get a bunch of suds. I'm gonna apply it up to the top. We got some flies, that's what he's kind of swatting and lifting his leg at. Bring it up, apply to the top. And I really wanna try and massage into that tailbone. Same with the roots of his mane, you want to Get right down to the roots. Massage that in. Okay, we're gonna let that sit for a few minutes. Kind of absorb in, let those suds dissolve out, and then we'll rinse it out. Okay, we allowed that to absorb in a little bit. Let the foam, honestly, just as a general rule, I like to wait until I see those, those suds from that soapy lather start to dissolve out. and then we'll rinse. I start at the top, work my way down. A lot of times they kind of tuck and grab their butt when you first hit them with this water up around their tailbone, like that. Causes them a little discomfort. Just watch them. Some horses react different. I know he's just gonna tuck his butt and that's about it. Some might kick, some might jump. Be really careful. Okay, and notice I'm gonna spend a lot of time right here. The last thing I wanna do is leave any type of residue there for him to, uh, to cause him discomfort and make him wanna rub. So I'm gonna make sure and rinse this very thoroughly. Okay, now that we've got that all rinsed out, I'm gonna do the same thing that I did with the mane on AJ is apply the detangler while this uh, tail is wet. It's gonna absorb into that hair, penetrate those hair strands, really firm them up, soften them up, and when I go to brush it, it's gonna make all the difference.
separate that hair out, rub it in, so you're not just getting the top shut section of hair. What I like to do too on these tails is flatten it out like that. Get this detangling, and then I'll kind of zigzag in there. Honestly, just dollop it all around, squeeze it. If you can, get that on the inside because that's the hardest hair to get to. Squeeze it and rub it in, and then it works from the outside in. You're going to see when we go to brush this tail out, even now, these shavings from prior to washing it are just going to fall out. They'll just brush right out. Again, get that on the inside, run it down. If you got any excess in your hand, roll it right back into it. Guys, this detangler just makes this tail feel so, I don't want to, like it feels heavy, but not in a bad way. It feels heavy like it's got some weight to it and some sustenance to it, some body to it. I'm just working my way down it. Okay, now to leave them uh, before, leave it to dry. I don't want to brush it while it's wet. We're going to tie a little half hitch in it. And I might even pull that tail through. Not pull it super tight, but just enough to keep it snug up off the ground. He can swish it, he can do whatever. And not get it all the way down to where he steps on it. We're going to leave him until he dries. And uh, then we'll come back and show you how we brush it out, braid it, condition it, and bag it. Okay, we've allowed this tail to dry for some time. It's not completely dry, but it's dried enough that I feel good about brushing through it. Guys, I told you, after we put this detangler in this and allow it to just sit here, it's just going to fall apart. These knots and snarls are just going to fall away from each other. And they really do. It is so easy to peel this apart. As usual, we start at the base. See how easy that was? And just work our way up. Just gliding through it. This tail had been in a tail bag for at least two weeks. I wanna say it's right about two weeks. If anything, it would be three or four days over two weeks because we typically do them on Sunday or Monday, sometimes Tuesdays, what's today, Wednesday. So it's been two weeks and two or three days, you know, 16, 17 days since we did it, which is far too long, at least here. We like to do them every seven to 10 days, tops. And this is just easily brushing through that shampoo. Lathers up so well that it really just removes any and all dust and debris. You're gonna have a little bit of breakage. Obviously we had this in far too long. We trailered him a handful of times, hauling him in those two weeks, stayed at the vet for a week. So we expected to have some damage, but I'm overall thrilled with the way this is brushing out and the way this feels. Would not feel this way without the grooming products that we have. And I know it just sounds like I'm talking these products up because they're ours, but I'm telling you, if I found a product that was better than ours, I'd be using it. Cool. <clears throat> Excuse me. So now we got that brushed out. Really, we blitzed through that tail. 
That went fast, it went quick. He's got a he's got a long tail, obviously. It's not the thickest tail on the place, but it's got some some thickness and fullness to it, some body to it. I'm gonna go right to braiding it. Don't need to put any type of detangler in it because we just brushed it, brushed out fine. We're gonna braid it and then we'll soak it in conditioner. Again, I just do your standard three strand braid. I try and make sure that all three strands are the same width, the same size. Find his tailbone, his tailbone ends right there. So my first cross is gonna be just below there. Try and keep those strands straight. Double check that my tailbone's there. Give it a little push up, make sure we're not too tight. We don't wanna be tugging on that tailbone the same way we don't wanna be tugging on the roots of the mane when we braid the mane. And then after, <clears throat> after a few crosses, we can start tightening it up. You can get fancy with it. You can do French braids. You can do all types of braids. You can, after you get it started, you can even split it out into eight strands and do an eight strand braid, however you want. My biggest thing, I, I do the three strand braid just because it's quick and efficient for me. I think other braids look cool. What I would suggest in preventing in doing more extravagant braids is prevent from doing them too tight um, to where, you know, if you're wrapping that hair around or something other than this braid, that you don't have that hair so tight that it causes a weak point in that hair um, and causes that uh, to break or be damaged. That's the only thing I would suggest. If you do crazy extravagant braids, I think that's awesome. If they you feel like they're kind of hard on the hair and they shouldn't be left in long, don't leave them in long. Do them for your show, do them for, for your posts to show off and then take them out and do a little less maintenance braid, a little easier braid uh, that's, that's not as hard on the hair. We're about finished up. This is getting down to the end. When I get down to a pretty small braid, I don't feel like I go to the end of the tail. Like I'll probably leave that much tail hanging out just because I feel like that's a pretty small braid anyways. So now we're gonna get our biomine tape. Do one good wrap, get it tight. Then we'll go over a few times just to keep it secure. Give it a tug, rub that smooth, and there you go. Now, I gotta step <clears throat> step away to go get the conditioner in the tail bag, so I'll just kinda half hitch it and come back. Okay, got our conditioner in our tail bag. We are going to load this tail up in conditioner. I do a good steady bead along the whole thing. Not so far down that it gets away from you. So I'll do the top there, all the way down. And what excess I have, I'll do on the bottom. And I'll just honestly massage it in. I feel like you can't do enough conditioner on the tail. Obviously you can, but I'm gonna fill my hand right here while I'm holding this tail. And then I'm gonna just run that along the base and follow it with my other hand to pick up any excess, get it all the way down. When I was braiding his tail, when I reached the end, the ends felt pretty dry and brittle. So I'm gonna really make sure I coat the end of it. And then any excess I've got, I'm gonna just put up in the top. Attach our tail bag. Honestly, the quickest way to attach the tail bag, his tail's obviously too long for a tail bag. I'll fold it up, drop it in, 
and then I'll just feed it down in until I get the height that I need. Tailbone ends right here, so I'm gonna go just below that an inch or two. Spread, don't even look for my three strands. I just lay that flat, just pull it apart right in the middle, just a small little gap. Push my Velcro through, snug that up. Voila, that tail goes all the way to the bottom, wraps back up, comes to about there. And he's done, I put him away. We gotta do his mane. We just got done with his tail, I'll do his mane next. After his mane and forelock are done, I will put him away and we won't touch that for, unless you know he gets super dirty or we have a show that we wanna take him to. Other than that, I won't touch him for another seven days. Probably next Tuesday, next Wednesday, we'll do him again. Thanks guys. Hey YouTube, thanks for watching. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe. We'd love to hear from you, so don't hesitate to comment on our videos and we'll see you in the next one, thanks.